Hello and welcome to Ag PhD. I'm Darren Hefty. And I'm Brian Hefty. Thanks for joining us today. You know, today, Darren, we're going to talk about a nutrient that we don't need any more of on our farm, but there are a lot of farmers around the country that need it. It's magnesium. We want to explain its importance today. Now, one thing we need a little more of is a little stronger rate on some corn pre-herbicides. As we've got some more Roundup resistant weeds, as we've got more valuable crops out in the field, we have to take care of our weed pressure. So we're going to talk about the rates you should be using for your corn pre-herbicides. We also wanted to discuss a newer weed that's kind of entered into our area and is causing a few problems. We've got that coming up for you later in the show, but first, here's this week's Farm Basics. Farm Basics is brought to you by the Liberty Link Trait and Liberty Herbicide from Bayer. The most reliable weed management solution, Liberty Link and Liberty Herbicide are the link to efficient row crop production and sustainable weed management. During our Farm Basics time today, we'll discuss emptying and filling grain bins. You probably have to fill it before you can empty it, Darren. Well, that would be an important thing to do. You know, <laughs> the other thing is, uh, grain bins have really changed over the last few years as when farmers are building new ones, they don't build small ones anymore. They build great big ones in almost every case. And, and you may be wondering, well, why is that size changing so much too? Yeah, so first of all, just for example, when we were growing up, a lot of grain bins that got built were around 3,000 bushels. 3,000 bushels today, just is not very much. I mean, if a farmer is getting 200 bushel corn, that's only 15 acres worth of grain that he can put in that bin. Whereas when we were growing up and yield was, let's say 100, then you could store 30 acres in there. So not only was the farm size smaller then, but the yields were a lot less. There just wasn't as much need to have great big grain bins. Well, that's kind of changed how farmers are filling the grain bins as well. When we talk about getting that grain into the bin, it's one thing when you've got a bin that's uh, 1,000 bushels or 3,000 bushels, they're pretty small and many farmers have an auger that can push that grain up and drop it in the top or they may even have a belt conveyor that they would run the grain up and into the bin. Now as the bins are getting much taller and much larger some farmers are putting in grain legs. Now these legs have a belt that goes around and there are cups that are attached to the belt that lift little scoops of grain up and dump it in the top of the bin. So that's one way of doing it. The other way you could do it is with the vacuum system where you could actually just suck it right through a tube and drop it up into the bin. So there's a couple different ways you can do things. Well, quite a few different ways to get the grain into the bin. But as far as getting grain in and getting grain out of bins, it's gotten a lot easier nowadays because back with the 3,000 bushel bins, a lot of farmers and like Darren and myself, we've scooped in plenty of those bins. So it's shoveling to get the grain out, or at least part of the way out. So what, what happens is when these You're grain You're still bitter bins, about that <laughs> shoveling you did, aren't you, Brad? Oh, no, 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 it just made me a little stronger. <laughs> anyway, the, the point is what they do with these grain bins is they'll actually have a little floor in them, and below that floor, there's an auger. The auger will go to the center of the bin, and so in the old days, you had to scoop everything to the center. Well, now you can either use a vacuum system or they have what's called a sweep auger in there. So a lot of the bigger bins that are designed now, there's a sweep auger that just sits in the bottom of the grain bin and it's in that bin. You fill the grain bin up, it's still sitting in the bottom of the bin, and that will actually sweep all the way around the bin to bring the grain to the center, so there's almost no scooping anymore. Well, the good part about that is if we can keep people outside the bin, it's a lot safer for all right. of us. Where we run into issues, you may hear of farmers from time to time who, who have an accident in the bin and, and get hurt or even killed. Uh, it almost always happens when they're unloading grain and many times there may be some moisture that gets in a bin and they may have a crust over the top and all of a sudden there's a hollow pocket underneath in some cases where a farmer may fall through and get sucked in the grain or as that grain is unloading he just gets pulled down into the grain. So we want to try and do all the things we can to keep farmers outside the bin and keep them safe. And the other thing that we always encourage farmers to do is use the buddy system. Never ever ever enter a bin unless someone is right outside the bin and ready to help you in case of an emergency. Well, grain bins are getting bigger on the farm and we're seeing many more new bins built as both farm size increases and the yield per acre increases. But grain bins can be a very safe way to handle that grain as long as farmers follow the rules and use a buddy system whenever they have to enter the bin or just buy the new equipment so they can stay out of the grain bin as they're unloading and loading that bin. Well, grain bins are very important on the modern day farm, but weed control is maybe even more important than that. We're going to discuss how to control this week's weed coming up later in the show. For years, FarmLogic has been the easiest and most convenient way to keep up with your farming operations. Well, it just got better. Introducing FarmPad for your phone. 
You always have your phone with you, so entering records as they happen is as easy as a touch of a button. Chemical database, GPS, service records, and more. When you do it on the farm, save it on your phone and it's backed up forever. Call or visit farmlogic.com for a free trial and find out why FarmLogic is the best decision tool for the farm. Advanced Farming Systems from Case IH helps producers be ready. Our precision farming solution is less complex and built right into our equipment. Factory integrated with open architecture, AFS works with all of your implements, no matter what color they are. And our team of dedicated specialists are here to keep you rolling 24-7, 365. The world of farming is changing. Will you be ready? I'm ready. For lower costs and higher production, see your Mandaco dealer. Ask about the best production built land roller on the market. Mandaco, simple design for easy transport and easy use. 12 to 62 foot widths, heavy duty 4x8x3 by by inch tube frame, and now available with a steerable wing wheel. Mandaco Land Rollers, improved soil to seed contact, faster, more uniform germination, less moisture loss. Eliminate downtime due to rocks. See your Mandaco dealer. Visit northcountrymarketing.biz or call 877-915-8790. Looking to maximize yield? Quickroots is a microbial seed inoculant that allows the plant root to explore a greater volume of soil, the key to higher yields. Quickroots continues to generate yield response on corn, soybeans, wheat, and more. Quickroots is applied to the seeds so the live microorganisms go right to work, enhancing seedling vigor, increasing the uptake of certain nutrients, including NPK, and expanding root volume. Maximize yield on your farm this season. Call TJ Technologies or your local dealer and get your quick roots today. Back in 1966, Advanced Drainage Systems, Inc. was the first company to start manufacturing plastic agricultural drainage pipe in the United States. And today, ADS continues our leadership with superior pipe production and service capabilities. Our roots are firmly entrenched in the agriculture industry, and we're committed to helping farmers grow their business. With 54 manufacturing plants and 24 distribution yards throughout the world, you can count on ADS and our green-striped pipe to be there when you need us. Advanced Drainage Systems, the green-striped pipe you can count on. Magnesium is one of the most important nutrients for any plant. It's a secondary nutrient, so it's not at the level of N, P, and K, the primary nutrients, but it is along the level of calcium and sulfur. Magnesium is considered a secondary nutrient. Well, magnesium is very important for plant growth, and it's really critical in the photosynthesis process. And when you think about it, really, that's what plants are out here to do, to take that sunlight energy, convert it into some kind of grain that we're going to grow and use for food or for farmers raise as a cash crop. So if we don't have enough magnesium out there, that's going to be very important. But where we're at, our clays are really blessed with lots of magnesium in them, and in the case of this soil right here, too much magnesium at times. In the Montmorillonite clays, we actually have a lot of magnesium present right in those clays. So in those types of soils, magnesium is more than not a problem that you have too much and not too little. So what we're looking at here is not necessarily parts per million. In other words, if you had a very high amount of calcium in your soil and a very high amount of potassium and even hydrogen in your soil, then the magnesium, even though you might have quite a few parts per million, might not be too much. And the way that you can tell that is by getting a base saturation test run on your ground. So it's pretty simple. It's just part of a normal soil test. You just may have to request it at your particular lab, but it only costs a few extra dollars to run this test. And this base saturation test will tell you the ratio of magnesium to all the other elements that make up base saturation. So in other words, with magnesium, what we're looking for here is in the range of 12% up to about 25%. That's kind of considered the ideal range, and that is a great big range. So this is not saying that you have to get it, you know, exactly to 13% or anything like that. 12 to 25, roughly in there, you should be about ideal for your soil. And when we think about magnesium, you say, well, what can be the big problem if I've got a little more than 25% out of my soil? Well, the big thing is with magnesium, it's one of those nutrients that really ties up other nutrients in the soil and makes them unavailable. For example, when you look at magnesium compared to other elements like uh, calcium, for example, magnesium has a little stronger magnetic power. It's going to draw a little stronger. So on soils like this, you may consider putting out gypsum, which is calcium sulfate. What happens when you put it in a high magnesium soil is that magnesium will displace the calcium 
and tie up with that sulfate. And it makes Epsom salts, which can actually flush away if you have good drainage through your soil. So with magnesium, it's kind of like that guy, Brian, in high school that always wanted to dance with your date. That magnesium would come in and attract onto that nutrient that you actually want in your soil and pull it away uh, making it unavailable for you. So basically you're saying I'm magnesium, huh? I don't know. <laughs> you can be magnesium if you want to. <laughs> okay, so anyway, with magnesium, here's the other problem with it. It's very, very small. The molecular size is small compared to calcium that's really big. So the example I always like to give to farmers is this. I say, okay, let's just think that we're in a great big room, okay? And let's pretend that room is filled with basketballs. Okay, and so we're in this room, it's completely filled floor to ceiling with basketballs. Would we still be able to breathe? Everybody says, oh sure, yeah, there's pore space there and the air can get through between those basketballs. Okay, now let's say that we filled that whole room with sand floor to ceiling. Are we still gonna be able to breathe? Nope, we're dead. And the reason why is because there's not enough pore space. It's the exact same thing that happens in your soil. If like in this particular ground that we're standing in here, there's 40 to 50% magnesium, that's really high and there's not enough calcium there. So there are all these small particles that now are getting tight together and we don't have pore space going through there. We don't have oxygen going through there. It's going to be tight, poorly drained, and it's not very fit for crop growth. What you end up with is a soil that in the spring is so tight and so sticky, a lot of farmers will say, well, well, just like this field, we have to work that in the fall, yep. otherwise it's gonna be impossible to deal with in the spring. Or the other side of it is, all right, if I do work it in the spring, if it's wet, all of a sudden I create concrete out in my field, and now that field's hard for the whole rest of the year, and there's really no way to overcome that. So like Darren said a little bit ago, our suggestion is to do gypsum out there. You could also put lime out there to raise the calcium percentage in ratio to the magnesium percentage. Now hold on, because when you talk about lime, most people think if I'm adding lime to the situation, I'm trying to raise my pH. And many times we're talking about low, heavy, poorly drained soil where the pH is rising already and we may have a pH issue there. Why would you add lime in that situation? Yep, yeah, because you have to look at what your calcium to magnesium ratio is. And all I'm getting at is, if you had a very high pH and you also had really high calcium levels and low magnesium levels, well, then it's not gonna do you any good to put more lime out. But if you have high pH and you have high magnesium percent compared to the calcium, then you can throw lime out and you don't have a lot of risk of raising that pH because there isn't a whole bunch of free calcium. There's all kinds of free magnesium that's causing problems and chances are in those types of soils, you have very poor drainage. So you gotta look at, Let's not just take the Band-Aid approach and throw the lime out there. Let's also fix the core problem, which is poor drainage. In those types of fields, like in this one, we put some tile in here a few years ago, and personally, I think we need even more tile than what we've got. But the point is, we've got to get the drainage good. We've got to improve that drainage, allow those salts to flush through, and over time, we'll lower the pH. Well, the other question with that, Brian, is, all right, so you're gonna add more calcium to the situation to try and get that base saturation hooked up. How fast or how quickly can we decrease that magnitude? Magnesium yeah, it's slow. I mean, this is a lifetime project. So like on this field here, this is a demonstration field that we're using where we've got half of it where we've put six tons of lime on four years in a row now compared to the other half where we've put no lime on. And this year we gained about six bushels in soybeans where we had this lime. I'm hoping that we're going to completely flip the switch here in about another three or four years and it'll get really a lot better. But honestly, this was a 20 year project in my book. Well, I do talk to farmers around the country and other farmers are having a little quicker results than we are. Of course, soils vary depending right. on where you're at. Some farmers are having really good luck using high rates of gypsum. Some farmers are having good luck using high rates of lime. The important thing is you can't just stay the same. If you say, you know what? I just have tons of magnesium out there. It's too much. My soil's tight and sticky. You know, ah, that ground just is never going to produce. So I'm not going to invest anything into that field. And we see a lot of neighbors right around our farm right here that are doing exactly that, that have just kind of given up on it and say, man, it's just going to cost too much money to try and fix it. Yep. We're going to try some different things here and see what we can do. We are, but also you want to think about, do you really want to pay top dollar for ground like this? Absolutely no way. It's not even worth probably one third of our good ground. So if you've got stuff where the magnesium percentage is 40%, 50%, again, you know, I'd say that ground is worth a lot less money. You want to look at these things before you go out and buy ground. All right. Well, we spent a lot of time on what do you do if you have too much magnesium? Of course, there is the opposite side of that equation. If you've got sandier soils or clays that don't have a lot of magnesium in there naturally, you may be low. You may be below that 12% on your base Tough saturation test. problem to test. solve though, Darren. We throw some more magnesium out. That's the good thing. <laughs> you know, it's, it's kind of nice when, uh, hey, I just need to add a little bit of fertilizer and things are good. Uh, that's a pretty simple approach. 
But you do have to look at all these things. Magnesium is a very important nutrient for your crops. It is a secondary nutrient and it's very important in photosynthesis. If you're short, by all means, add some. If you've got way too much, don't listen to those people that say, oh, there's nothing you can do about it. There are things you can do. Try some things. Even like this field, you say, well, what are you trying out there? You know, you're just trying part of the field. Sure we are. We're not going to go broke trying all kinds of things, but we are going to try them on a small amount of acres, see if we can get things to work. And if we can, then we'll do it on the whole farm. Well, you don't have to try and experiment with a number of different weed control products to control our Weed of the Week. We'll tell you what'll work on your farm coming up later in the show. You can't fill a barrel any fuller than its lowest stave. And your crops can't do any better than the nutrient that's in shortest supply. Your yield potential is only as good as the weakest nutrient in your fertilizer program. Give your crops more than just NPK. Prescription apply all the micronutrients your crop needs. Each one customized for your crop's potential. Microlink, linking yield to potential. Harvest season will soon be over, but don't put away your equipment until you bring it into Titan Machinery, your Case IH dealer. Take advantage of our Uptime Maintenance Program. Uptime is Titan's preventative maintenance service designed to eliminate costly downtime during the short working season. Our technicians average more than 10 years of experience and use a comprehensive checklist to find problems before they slow you down. Call Titan Machinery today to schedule your Uptime service so you can spend the winter worry-free. Titan Machinery and Case IH, better solutions. Everything is better to the power of Nutrisphere N. Proven to shield against leaching, volatilization, and denitrification, Nutrisphere N Nitrogen Fertilizer Manager helps you maximize the efficiency of your nitrogen applications. In fact, research shows that in 184 corn trials, Nutrisphere N increases yields by an average of 13.2 bushels per acre. Do the math for yourself. Contact your local fertilizer dealer today and take your operation to the power of Nutrisphere N. Why do more farmers choose Genuity VT Double Pro Rib Complete Corn Blend? For maximum yield protection. With two powerful ways to control above ground insects like corn earworm, corn borer, and fall armyworm. Plus convenient refuge in a bag with 95% traded seed and 5% refuge seed. That's simplicity. That's Genuity VT Double Pro Rib Complete Corn. The number one choice of farmers. Speed, strength, and efficiency make Capello corn heads a head above the rest. Built with polymer components that exceed industry standards, Capello corn heads continue to push the boundaries for maximizing grain retention while using less energy. Visit CapelloUSA.com and learn more about Capello's state-of-the-art chopping technology that cuts cleaner, allowing your horsepower to remain where it belongs, with your combine, so you can harvest faster in all weather conditions. Add to that an amazing folding feature and it's clear to see why Capello is a head above the rest. Corn pre-emerge herbicide rates. You know, when Roundup crops first came out, a lot of people went away from using pre-emerge herbicides or people like us cut back to a half rate or maybe a 40% rate. You probably can't do that so much anymore. Well, you shouldn't. And you have to think about this too. At that time, corn was two bucks. Yeah. Maybe corn was two and a half. Yep. Now corn's $7 plus and there's a great potential that this year the corn price could be you know, very good all through the summer, depending on what kind of crop we have coming next year. So you've got a huge investment out there. You've got this great big crop that's going to be worth a lot of money. Why would you try and trim 3 or $4 or $5 off your pre-emerge herbicide? Well, because like on our farm, if we have 1,500 acres of corn next year, if it's $4, that's 6000 bucks. Okay, so that's a nice deposit on a college fund or something like that. Oh, a lot, Brian. That, well, seriously, you know, that's you know the way what's a lot nice, of people look at it. You know what's a nice deposit on a college fund is getting another 10 bushels of I yield agree. next year. That's I much, agree, but much you're better. not going to get 10 bushels in most cases. You might get three or four or eight. 10 is kind of rare. Well, it so just depends on where you're at. Now, if we're talking about an area that has a lot of Roundup resistant weeds, you have to try and control as many as you can before they get out of the ground. Now, we're not just talking about in corn. Obviously, it's the same thing in soybeans or any other crop that you're going to raise. But we're just focusing on corn here for the day. You got to worry about those weeds. If we're out there with a good rate of a pre-emerge herbicide, we've got a lot more flexibility on that timing post-emerge because there's only a few weeds left, not a whole bunch. Yep, so this is one of the most challenging things in agriculture because I can't honestly sit here today and tell you that using a full rate of herbicide on every single field in the whole country is going to make you money. 
I really think it's going to make a lot of people money, probably work 98% of the time where it makes you money, maybe 90% of the time. And so you just have to weigh this out a little bit yourself on your farm. But I'll just tell you in our own operation, we've been trying to control every single weed that's been out there for 30 years now probably. And we still have weed pressure. I can't even believe the weed pressure we still have. I don't know what Darren was doing seeding weeds in the middle of the night or something. But anyway, the, I the was point thinking is, those were the rows that used to walk beans in, Brad. Yeah, but the point is I will just tell you over the last few years we've run a bunch of different programs roundup liberty conventional programs and I, I just thought it was funny a few years ago when our guys running the combines came in and said you know the roundup fields were the dirtiest fields we had and I, I said boy that seems awful strange but you know what that's where we cut the herbicide rate the most on the pre-emerge herbicide and that's when we started bumping back up to a half rate and now two-thirds rate and this next year honestly we probably will use a full rate on a lot of ground well that's not to give roundup a bad name either to no. say oh the roundup fields are the dirty so it wasn't because of the roundup no it's just because roundup doesn't have residual so we're relying on the residual control out of our pre-emerge or out of potentially a tank mix partner post-emerge so the main thing we're talking about here is potentially bumping your rates of pre-emerge herbicides we're not debating whether or not you should use a pre you absolutely should i'm going to tell you right now you have to do it use a pre-emerge herbicide no matter what. I don't care the situation. You've got to use a pre in corn. It makes you money. The question is, should you bump the rate from a half rate to a full rate in Roundup or Liberty crops? Well, when you look at this, anytime you're cutting back the rate on any of these pre's, whether it's in corn or soybeans, what are you losing? You're giving up more of the broadleaf control than you are of the grass control. And that's where Roundup struggling is with the broadleaves. So by doing that, what you're buying yourself is some more time. After you put that pre on, now you've got your corn that's starting to grow. You've got other crops on your farm too. Most farmers aren't just farming corn. And if you've got other crops you're trying to either plant or spray, all of a sudden you've got to stop everything, go back to the corn because, oh man, the weeds are already breaking through that pre that I've got. If you're using a full rate, you're going to buy yourself a little bit more time. Maybe it's another week. Maybe it's another 10 days, depending on the weather conditions and weed pressure. That's a big deal. Yep. And if you don't think that it's worth it to bump the rate, at least do it in a few strips and a few fields and weigh that out and just see what you're seeing for difference. Well, there's certainly a lot of choices with corn pre-emerge herbicides. We encourage you to look at one, look at the full rate, especially if you have our Weed of the Week. We'll show you which options control this tough weed coming up next. The Weed of the Week is brought to you by Mandaco. For lower costs and higher production, Mandaco leads with versatility unmatched. Twister is the vertical tillage unit for no-till as well as conventional tillage. See your Mandaco dealer. Visit northcountrymarketing.biz or call 877-915-8790. Our Weed of the Week is Toothed Spurge. It's not Leafy Spurge, it's Toothed Spurge. This one isn't quite as difficult to control as Leafy Spurge. Well, it's not as bad as Leafy Spurge. It's an annual weed, but it does have that milky sap on the inside of the stems and leaves. And so in that regard, it does kind of remind you of Leafy Spurge a little bit. It's got some lance-shaped leaves. With Toothed Spurge, it generally reproduces by seed. So if you can stop it from going to seed, you can keep it from becoming a big problem on your farm. The problem, Brian, is that Roundup, eh, it's... 50, 60% control <laughs> at a normal rate, even at yeah. two pass roundup, yeah, maybe 70 or 80% control. It's just not that great. Yep, and that's why a lot of times we see some toothed spurge out in fields later on in the season. Doesn't get real tall, doesn't grow way up above the corn or bean plants or wheat or whatever, but we are having some problems with roundup. So what are we gonna do for control? Let's start with corn. Well, with corn, we really like balanced flex down in states where it's labeled. We like atrazine to be included with some of the post-emerge treatments. That's a good helper. We also like status and we like buckdrill. Both of those are better when you have atrazine with them. Okay, now in soybeans, you probably better start with a good pre. Valor's real good. Post-emerge, pursuit bass grand combination in soybeans and even dry beans. That'd probably be your best option, wouldn't you say? That's not too bad. In sugar beets, we really like upbeat. We also like beta mix. That's done a nice job. In wheat, we really don't have much of a tooth spurge issue. We typically choke it out. It doesn't get very tall. You know, maximum it's going to get three feet tall. So most of the time with wheat getting started earlier on in the season and tooth spurge coming on just a little bit later. We don't really have a big issue with two spurge. If we did, we would certainly go with Husky. You could start out with a burn down that had Sharpen in it, yep. and that would be a nice program. So once again, our Weed of the Week is Tooth Spurge. A little bit different and a little bit easier to control than Leafy Spurge. Thank goodness. Well, that's it for our Weed of the Week, but stay tuned. Iron Talk is coming up next. Iron Talk is brought to you by Case IH. Advanced farming systems from Case IH helps producers be ready. AFS is less complex and built right into our equipment. 
and our team of dedicated specialists are here to keep you rolling. The world of farming is changing. Will you be ready? If you think getting starter fertilizer on your corn is just a matter of getting phosphorus out there, stay tuned to today's Iron Talk. We're going to discuss all the other things that you're going to need with your starter. For example, nitrogen, sulfur, and micronutrients. These are things that not many farmers think of with their starter application, but we're seeing some big time differences in early growth with nitrogen and sulfur when they're available for your plant. Also, micronutrients were huge in 2012 because we had a big drought. This year, we saw more stress tolerance where we used the proper rates of micronutrients versus our trials where we did not. The problem with these different products that I'm talking about here, these different nutrients, are that we have to keep them away from the seed. Now you can put a small amount of those nutrients right in the furrow, especially if you're using something like a why not split it or something like that where you're spraying it to the sides of the trench rather than dripping it right on the seed. However, you'd be much better off if you were doing a two by two placement with some of those more harsh nutrients, especially if you're running higher rates. That's all for today's Iron Talk and now back to the show. Hey Brian, it's Farm Guy. What brings you to our farm? I watch Ag PhD every week and know that you guys do a lot of field testing. We test a lot of products here and when something works, we use it on our farm. Oh, like agriculture liquid fertilizers. Yeah. You guys started talking about ProGerminator and SureK on the show a few years ago. But I was skeptical. You're always skeptical. Should Brian be skeptical of agro liquid fertilizers? Find out at www.farmguytv.com. Looking to maximize yield? Quickroots is a microbial seed inoculant that allows the plant root to explore a greater volume of soil, the key to higher yields. Quickroots continues to generate yield response on corn, soybeans, wheat, and more. Quickroots is applied to the seeds so the live microorganisms go right to work, enhancing seedling vigor, increasing the uptake of certain nutrients, including NPK, and expanding root volume. Maximize yield on your farm this season. Call TJ Technologies or your local dealer and get your quick roots today. For years, FarmLogic has been the easiest and most convenient way to keep up with your farming operations. Well, it just got better. Introducing FarmPad for your phone. You always have your phone with you, so entering records as they happen is as easy as a touch of a button. Chemical database, GPS, service records, and more. When you do it on the farm, Save it on your phone and it's backed up forever. Call or visit farmlogic.com for a free trial and find out why FarmLogic is the best decision tool for the farm. For lower costs and higher production, Mandaco leads with versatility unmatched. Twister is the vertical tillage unit for no-till as well as conventional tillage. Twister's ease of maintenance is forgiving in rocks and has contour conformity equaling zero downtime. Our hydraulically adjusted coulter angles make residue management easier and less costly. Spring or fall, the Mandaco Twister vertical tillage unit is the new leader. See your Mandaco dealer. Visit northcountrymarketing.biz or call 877-915-8790. Closed captioning for Ag PhD is sponsored by Norwood Sales. Introducing the all new Backsaver Swing Hopper Auger Mover. Backsavers have interchangeable parts which allows you easy access to move or swing your augers to fit your harvesting needs. Get yours today at Norwood Sales. That's all the time we have for today's show, but be sure to join us again next time for another Iron Talk, Weed of the Week, Farm Basics, and a whole lot more. I'm Brian Hefty. And I'm Darren Hefty. Thanks for watching Ag PhD. Why are many farmers reducing tillage? Reduced tillage has shown to increase soil's organic matter levels, reduce erosion potential, improve soil structure, and increase microbial activity and soil life. For more information, visit the Responsible Nutrient Management Foundation at rnmf.org.